Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's Rich. All right, I'm back from Comic Con, day two. We are going to rock some Joe Matarera original art. This is all from Battle Chasers. Special thanks to Quan Chang for giving me permission to film basically the whole portfolio. This is all the art that Joe is currently selling. He's actually given Quan some new pieces that were never available. So, uh, at some point I have gone through Joe's stuff. I can't remember if I ever uploaded it to YouTube or if it's just something that I recorded. But um, anyway, this is some killer, killer shit. I can talk a little bit about when Joe was working on it because I, I did see the process um, uh, a, a little bit because I was friends with Tom McWaney and Tom's office was at Wildstorm. So I was able to go in and uh, let's roll the video and then we'll get into some chitter chat. And uh, today was an awesome day at the show. And... Uh, it was good. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I gotta. I'm gonna mute the audio because the audio is just the room audio. Um, so this is the cover for the collected edition too. He would do these like almost like little snippet covers. And again, very very difficult to shoot without any kind of shadow or glare, um, <clears throat> because I'm so close to the the portfolio. I'm actually able to avoid the glare, but there's like rows and rows of like floodlights above, and uh, you're just not gonna escape shadow. I mean, unless you really um, spent a lot of time preparing the video and I don't have time at Comic-Con to do that. Uh, I mean, it's hard enough just to shoot these videos. So anyway, uh, the inks are beautiful on this stuff. I mean, it really is kind of one of the high points I think of the series. Joe was drawing great. No doubt about it. I mean, Joe's incredible. Tom's inks on Joe were just something really, really magical. Um, and, uh, they had like a warm, very pop, Kind of poppy kind of cartoony quality but they were just organic enough that they really let the stuff breathe and have life i'll be honest looking through the portfolio i was a little surprised that joe would let this stuff go i personally wouldn't um if i was joe uh you know but time a lot of times you know when you've had some time away from a job you know you may look back on it and for joe i mean it's something that he drew so it may have a very different kind of uh experience or vibe for him but uh these pages are really really expensive i mean this is two thousand five hundred dollars for this original uh and they go up and um, there's a couple that are like 12 grand um there's a red monica piece i think i have it on video on here um they're asking i think 20 or twenty five thousand for it so um, comic book original art is no joke man it really isn't it's some serious serious business um and uh this one's eight grand this is a great, great splash. There is actually a little bit of the Vince Russell inks in here. Vince did the sort of zero issue of Battle Chasers before Tom was brought on. Vince did a nice job. It's cool looking stuff. And the the little intro story is really cool. Liquid's color colors on the book obviously were great. I mean, I still, I I love the look of the book. I think it still looks very contemporary, even though it was it was done just about probably 20 years ago, which is crazy to think of. But I think that's about right. Um, many times Joe does go to Comic Con. I think this is um from the Zero issue. Sorry, my someone's blowing up my phone. I'm gonna move it because it's gonna keep beeping. I've got like three friends texting each other, and I'm like in the middle of the conversation. Yeah, so this is ink by Vince Russell. He, he really did nice stuff. You know, the interesting thing about Vince to me, too, is I really don't know what he went on to do after this. <coughs> I, I didn't really see his name on too many books. But, um, you know, he may have gone into some other line of work or penciled comics. I don't really know. But That's kind of what I say about, co like, comic book work in general is... No job is guaranteed and you're not going to, it's like anything that you do in comics, it's like the, the industry is always evolving. And so, you know, one fad comes and goes, one art team comes and goes. It's very rare that anything is really consistent for more than five or six years. And then just things, it always changes. I mean, it makes it interesting, but you have to be pretty, um, pretty malleable as a, as a person and as an artist, because if you are stuck in sort of like one groove, It'll it'll be tough to like uh, continue to progress. 
Actually, I'm going to do th these pauses work better than with the mouse. It makes a little bit of racket. I was watching the video back this morning and the other video is kind of loud. Again, just beautiful, beautiful inks. Jason Martin did a real nice job too. I mean, all the inkers on the book, I think, did. It was funny because I asked Quan, I said, did all the Red Monica pages sell? And he goes, they sold so fast. <laughs> Because I, I was I was noticing like a few pages in the portfolio. I was like, I don't see any Red Monica pages, but I bet they sold. And sure enough, they did. So that was kind of funny. The pages get better and better. Like this is some iconic shit coming up. The, the page to the right that we're going to look at in a second is really, really like a memorable page from the book. He does great wolves. I love the shapes of the faces. I'll go back a little bit. Let me... Uh... Sorry. In the heat of Comic Con, it's like, uh, you know, you've got people coming up behind you and want to look through the portfolios, and you're kind of eating up table space and stuff like that. So you kind of got to hustle. Oh, you know, one thing I can do, hold on, let me do this. Or I can slow it down a little bit. Playback speed. We'll go a little slower. This wolf's face. So cool. Oh man, it's so nice. Let me add, I'll go full screen again. I remember when I was first learning to draw, I would kind of try to draw like uh, monster hands, like a little bit like Joe with these knuckles and stuff like that. Especially, I drew a wolf one time, like a wolf character, and I was like really kind of trying to channel this look. Ooh. <laughs> His face is funny. These look cool too. <laughs> the black like silhouette wolves. This page right here. This is the shit. Let me hold on. I'm gonna. I'll go slower on this one. Let me. Uh, I'll slow it down a bit more. Slower, and then we're gonna go slower still, more slow. There, fifty percent speed. Okay. All right. Let's ride this slow and low. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that wolf. The one that's all this right here. This is my favorite one. He's great. This guy's face is great, too. I like his ears down. He's a mad wolf. And this one, too, is good. They're all good. And that hand is awesome. Look at him. That's how much I liked it. I zoomed in on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mad with an exclamation point. Ah, oh, these are such good panels. I streamed so long and shot so much video, my camera died today, my phone. So by like 2.30 or 3 o'clock, my phone was dead. Dead. That's not a good place to be at Comic-Con with a dead phone. Garrison. It was interesting as the issues went along. So this is issue 7. Garrison really actually started to look quite a bit different. Joe really started to stylize him quite a bit more. And um, it looked pretty cool. It took me a little getting used to because he really did look different. Um, I mean, you could tell it was the same character, but he was definitely like he had a different um, sort of like a base model. He was sort of kind of channeling. Like, see these, like, just, it's like a little more cartoony. He does, there's a great villain that's coming up in the next pages that, man, he drew cool. He's got really, like, long arms. It's, I've always been a fan of that with, like, um, bad guys, where they have, like, almost, like, um, that look like their arms have been stretched out. This, the villain right here, too, is great. This facial expression, him looking back, it's really killer. Meh. Mm hmm? So it's been fun 
meeting people. So if uh, if you follow my YouTube channel and you came by my table today or yesterday, one, thank you very much. I met some Patreon people. It's been awesome. It was really fun. Been doing portfolio reviews for people that bring their stuff by. I always have. It's nothing new. I mean, I always will check out people's work and try to help them out. So, my pleasure. I always think it's funny. Like, people go, how much does it cost for you to sign a book? I'm like, I'll sign your book for free. I'm not going to charge you. You think I am? Axel Rose? No. <laughs> and, and Gully got more cartoony, too, actually. So this is issue nine. We're kind of creeping up on the last book. But like I said, there's a bunch of pages that <coughs> Joe just kind of fed Quan um, that I, I'd never seen Quan have when I was like, whoa, you have these now? Holy shit. Holy shit. Hey, you can see my shoe and my backpack. This is a $5,000 page right here. You tell me, does this got $5,000 worth of loving on it? What do you think? It's got a wolf. It's got a big, big wolf and her holding the book from her daddy. And the pike. And that was it. Oh, this. So this, I think Quan said that it had sold for... 20,000 no 15,000 and the guy wanted to sell it for 20,000 I set it up here so there's a little bit less glare this is basically a pencil drawing with I think like an ink out I doesn't have an ink outline 20 grand and it's already sold for 15 once it's even got like some soup stain on it or something by her cape oh, you see that little yellow area kind of over there that was extra two grand for that. <laughs> Boobs. 10,000 per breast. <laughs> so there you go. You got to see it for free. You're welcome. <laughs> I skipped the bar again tonight just for you guys. So I could shoot YouTube videos. Hey, look, you could see my wristband. That proves that I'm over 21 and I could drink alcohol at the con. No, I'm just kidding. All right, what do we got? Let's do this. <coughs> More battle chasers. Oh, it's in slow motion. I was like, like, what is going on? Why am I so slow? All right, I'm going to just speed it back to normal for a second. Normal speed. All right. And... Oh, yeah, this is a great panel. Whoa. It's so funny when you're filming it, it feels like you're going so slow and you watch back the videos and it's like, man, I was racing through these pages. That's pretty badass. I need to watch back that live stream. Just watching this, I'm just remembering all the cool shit that I saw today that I didn't really like. It's when you're filming, you can't really enjoy the stuff. So you have to, I for me, I have to kind of go back and watch the video to really get like the full, uh, full throttle effect. That's really hard to do. When you, the, the technique is not hard. It's not hard to blacken a face like this. It's hard to do it and look at it as the artist I've found and, and go, okay, that looks okay. Cause you just, it always looks like you're like that just, it, it's like when I put shadows on faces, sometimes I go, I know the shadows are right. Like they're in the like right spots where they would be, but it look, it just is weird to draw on faces or put like a lot of like shading, but uh, you know, it looks great, but it, it is, it's funny. It's like, you have to really get used to seeing your work that way. Oh, man, his monster hands are so good. It's a nice action page. Man, the torque on Goalie's body right here is freaking awesome, and this is great. <clears throat> That's really cool. This is nice. And then she climbs out the window, and she runs to freedom. Oh, this guy, this character I freaking love. 
Oh, he's so cool. All right, see how Garrison looks different there kind of now? He's got big, long fingers. This is a great panel. Look at this. So this is Jason Martin. So you can see Jason is a little rougher, and it's a little more... Um, a little more organic, like there's not the um, sort of, um, it, it just looks more um, sort of like uh, more drawn than like inked, like ink lines, um, when professional inkers will ink stuff a lot of times they kind of slicken things up. This guy is so cool, this is such a great shot, look at that. Man, that's awesome. really like halfway through the video so we got some good stuff coming up this is an interesting splash <clears throat> there's not a lot of black on it so it's like when when you look at it kind of in person you really have to kind of focus your eyes to um see things it gets a little more the cape is real cool too Double page spread. Hold on, we'll get this clear in a second. Um, so I've I've filmed and shown this double page spread definitely in another video, or I know for a fact that I filmed this, but this is such a memorable, great, great double page spread. It's just so iconic. It's ten grand. I think that's actually a pretty fair price for this, to be honest. Um, obviously, Gully, like a kid character, is not like as exciting as you know red monica with her boobs hanging out no i'm kidding but um you know what i'm saying it's like um i think if the story would have gone on longer and and you really understood more about gully and, uh, and more of the story was told her importance would be more significant and that would definitely r rack up the um the value you know of it even more so longevity definitely um helps with the value of art obviously we see it all the time with like stuff that's you know from the 80s or 70s or 60s that's it's like uh you know did it stand the test of time do the characters matter you know a lot of stuff is hot for a minute and then it just becomes like you know i mean some stuff is still collectible like you know teenage mutant ninja turtles number one like if you have a copy of that it's pretty badass so these were new pages that i had never seen um i don't or, or sub, i've seen this one with um kwan the one on the right i didn't remember him having this one I'm nearly sure he did because I remember the shot with the trees. This is badass though. God, I remember the inks on this. So this is Tim Townsend on this one. So this is pencils, Joe Mad, and then it says, oh, oh, he wrote the rest of his name. It's interesting. I wonder who wrote this. If that's Townsend finished his name and then put his name behind it, it's kind of weird. Editorial. I don't remember I don't remember this stuff being sent into Wildstorm. I mean, the reason that I saw originals early on was because Tom McWinney was inking it at the studio. But Tim lives in Florida, I believe. So it's I, I highly doubt that they sent these originals in um, ever. So Tim might have written that up there. Seems weird a little bit. I, I wouldn't have finished Joe's name personally, but really, really great shit. Come on, focus. That. Man, that's so cool. I've, I've met Tim Townsend in person, but only like two times very, very briefly. But he, everybody says he's a great guy. It would be fun to like meet him and hang out with him. Just I've, I've, I've really only been to like one show in Florida. And he came to Wildstorm years and years ago with uh, Dan Panosian, but I was a scrub back then, so I didn't really get to meet those guys. This is great. <laughs> the animals, Ryan. He's really good at cartooning this kind of stuff. Man, his shapes are just so great. There's my dude. This guy's such a cool character. 
Joe draws great trees. He draws great gear. His pouches are cool. This is an awesome panel. This is cool. Look at that shot. He's getting punched. Calibretto. So basically in this portfolio was probably around $150,000 worth of art, give or take. I wasn't adding it up, but at five grand a pop, 20 pages would be a hundred grand. So it was probably over a hundred K. It's a spicy, spicy portfolio. <laughs> Imagine if, he, <laughs> this is a far-fetched imagine, but imagine if Joe had continued working on it from the time that, like, we originally did these pages, if there was, like, 60 issues out. Oh, my God. <laughs> it would be so, it would have been so cool to get more of the story. That's my biggest um, sort of bummer on it, was I actually really enjoyed reading Battle Chasers. Not only did I love the art, but I actually really was interested to see the characters sort of evolve. So... It's a bummer when, you know, a new title comes up and you really love it. And uh, it's kind of like a short, like short lived story. Although I know that they did a crowdfunded book with like someone else finished it, but it's not the same without Joe drawing it, I don't think. No matter how good the artist is, it's, it's like, again, I think everybody wanted to see Joe draw it, of course. Boop, boop, boop. He's getting funked. Really cool second panel with that upshot of the tree is great. Oh, you know, I didn't hear about this at Comic-Con, but when I got home, I saw on um, Instagram that um, Todd McFarlane and Greg Capullo are going to be doing a Batman Spawn project. Uh, probably a one-shot, I would guess, but that's pretty cool, you know? I think that's a pretty exciting announcement, to be honest. So if you didn't hear that... Um, I guess they announced that at a panel or something at Comic-Con. Oh, and this is... Quan handed me these while we were looking at it, so don't worry, we'll look at those stuff. This is great, though. The gloves. How much does he want for this? Let's see. I'm gonna go back. Yeah, it was like... I was looking through the stuff, and all of a sudden, he just, like, plunked down more art. And I'll go back to Quan's tomorrow, and I'll try to look at something that we haven't seen from him. That's 15000 for this. Um, but uh, yeah, like he, he represents a lot of different people, so it's pretty interesting. I saw a Lanil Yu, wasn't at Quan's booth, but I saw a Lanil Yu X Men cover, and they were asking $24,000 for it. It was like, it was a nice cover. I don't know. 24 grand seems steep for it, though. I was a little surprised. Oh, this is cool. So this is um, 15K too, and. Uh, only in pencil. It is drawn 11 by 17, though. Like I said, a lot of Joe's more recent pencils, he had been doing them smaller. Um, but uh, this is a full-size piece. And what else we got? Oh, more pages in the book. Oh, this was the sideways. I think this is the last piece that I look at. Um, but, yeah, this is... That might have been from the Frazetta Illustrated and see and this is what i'm talking about see these are double page spreads but he's drawing them on 11 by 17 boards sideways i'm doing a demo for you or no, for patreon right now um of the battle chasers double page spread it's not it's like a it, it's like two groups of um characters running towards each other in the middle it wasn't in the original series I'm not really sure what it if it was a like a promo that he did later for the video game or for the crowdfunder or whatever but um I'm doing it as a demo, but uh, I'm going to actually reprint. I'd originally printed out 11 by 17 sideways. I'm actually going to do it 22 by 17 because I want to be able to throw big lines and, and have um, big chunky inks. Because when you, when you ink small like that, all the lines end up being small, and it's not as fun to ink that way. I like to throw big, juicy lines and brush lines and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to start it over. I'd, I'd done about 90 minutes worth of work on the um, one, but... I'm just going to scrap that and uh, start over. But, 
Yeah, I wanted to um, wanted to do a nice inking demo so that people can learn some inking techniques. So I think that that's it. Yeah, that's it. So, all right, you guys have a great day, great night. Um, tomorrow I'm not doing Comic-Con. I'll be back there Sunday. So tomorrow um, I probably won't do a video, but uh, Sunday I'll live stream in the morning. So my time probably around 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 to maybe 8.45, around there I'll be like live. Uh, and then I'll shoot more art at Quan's booth that morning. And uh, then at night I'll come home and edit it up and probably throw it up either Sunday night or uh, Monday morning I'll put it up. But anyway, I'll be back Sunday live, and uh, that'll be really fun. And uh, if you are going to the show, come by and say hello. It's been awesome, you know, seeing and, and meeting people that, you know, I I know online or, or have followed the channel. It's, it's been really, really cool meeting you all. So, all right, you guys have a great night. I'm going to chill, have some water. And get to sleep. So, all right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.